Minimalist goes skiing. Hi, Karen here, and today I'm going to talk about how to be a minimalist packer for a ski trip. I'm just back from my ski trip and I waited until I came back so I could make sure that I would be able to tell you exactly what did work and what didn't work, would I have changed anything, and there's a couple of things I, I would have actually changed. I can honestly say I only brought one item of clothing that I never wore. Besides that though, I wore everything, I didn't run out of clothes. You've had this pair of extra gloves this whole time? Yeah, we're in the Rockies. A good friend of mine is doing quite a major move in a few months and we got to talking about what sort of suitcases to get. I've already done a video on the smaller suitcase I use week to week for my traveling and work, but skiing is a bit of a different matter. It's not huge, huge, as you can see. This is the perfect size. In discussion with my friend, she asked me where I got my great big suitcases, because I said go for the cloth ones that don't cost very much. And I said I just got the cheapest one I could. And I think that places like Walmart or Target or here in the UK, I was at the range this morning getting art supplies. Dangerous. And guess what was prominently displayed as soon as I walked in the store? Suitcases of all sizes. The large one was I think $35.99. Now that's even if you have to buy one in the first place. Now any friend of mine that is watching this video, if they need to borrow a large suitcase for a trip because they don't use it very often, you are absolutely free to use mine if you want to. So what did I take on my trip? Let's see. Four tops, two bottoms, six pairs of socks, I brought eight pairs of underwear, and I brought an extra bra, and I, I brought an extra sports bra. That's what you should wear when you go skiing, trust me. Now the extra piece of clothing that I said I brought, that I didn't need, were actually the cotton trousers that I'm wearing right now. It was way too cold and most ski trips are too cold to wear that. The tops that I brought are the tops that you see me on my videos all the time. They are literally just cotton turtlenecks. I wore them skiing and I also wore them if we went out for dinner because one thing you have to understand when you go to a ski resort is that nobody dresses up. Everywhere you go, people are in ski jackets and turtlenecks and snow pants. It just is not a place that's elegant and glamorous. If you're one of the elite rich people, I suppose going to Courchevel, that might be a bit different. You ski very well, Mr. Bond. My magic little formula is really easy. I pack for half of the time that I'm going for. I'm going for a 10 day trip and I packed for five days. Once I get there, I am going to do laundry. I just did a couple of things every day. So I do two pairs of socks and one of my turtlenecks. Sometimes you go traveling and you don't have access to a laundromat. Now what are the ski things that you need to bring for a ski trip? Please, please, please would you bring this very important item. Helmet. You got a helmet? Please, you gotta bring a helmet. Oh I've got a helmet. Not only is it great for saving your life, look at the padding inside and look at the earmuffs. This is the warmest thing. I love my helmet. It is absolutely great. Not only do I love my helmet, I think I look really good in it as well. I think I, th I, think I just do. Maybe not like that. Essential to skiing is making sure that your face is protected. My husband just wore this all week. This would not do me any good whatsoever. I use it for cycling, but that would not be good enough for me. You can have different types of face masks. I actually can't find my favorite ma face mask and you don't understand how attached I am to my face mask. I have to send out an all points bulletin to find out where the heck that thing is. But here's one that's a half mask. This would be very good for cycling as well when you're around the zero temperature. This is what I'm gonna have to use. This is for the cold, 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 cold times. Just a standard balaclava. Personally, I don't like balaclavas because my, my head just itches like crazy underneath them. And these are the best gloves or mitts that I've ever had. Personally, I find the gloves to be far too cold for me. My hands get cold like that. I use hand warmers a lot. And I sometimes will have little light cotton gloves when it's really, really, really cold. You want to get ski gloves that are long as well. So these go right over your wrist. You don't want the short ones. Now a very, very important piece of kit as well that you want to get is long underwear. Uh, long underwear, right? How do you know when to use it? So when I started skiing, for many years, 
I wore the one piece. There was no such thing as ladies long underwear. We had to wear men's with the trap door at the back. You can get them like thick or thin. And then finally, people realized, wow, women go skiing. But you know what? The legs are always too short. So I actually had to go back to men's. I got these at the Helly Hansen outlet. What, what difference does it make? Where you buy underwear? I wanted to have a high neck. So I got this top. It's Mountain Warehouse Isotherm. It's not too, too baggy, but I love long, long sleeves, which was great. Long johns I got, don't worry, they're not too revealing, were these, a Mountain Warehouse, but these were extreme coldness. And the reason I got those is because on the bottom, all I have is long underwear and my snow pants. Whereas at least on top, you can layer and layer and layer. These were magnificent, so warm. And look how thin they are. Underwear is underwear. So you're gonna have, you know, to go out for supper and you're gonna, you're gonna have the evening, but it's still really cold. And I'm not a person that likes hats so much. They just don't suit me. It was very cold when we were out at Banff. I bought these and these are little ear muffy things. How great is that? And they're wire. So I had to adjust mine a little bit because it was a little bit too tight on the upper right-hand quadrant or something like that. I wore these every day I went out. It was fantastic. They are so warm and they weren't expensive. Another thing you're going to need, of course, too, are goggles. You need goggles for varying conditions. So you need bright sun goggles, which kind of look like that. But you need cloudy day goggles. These are a light yellow. I actually wore these on the bright days as well. I actually never used the lens. You can replace these, that's the way they come. So it's kind of two goggles for the price of one. If you are looking for cloudy day goggles, you have to get the light yellow ones. Don't buy the darker yellow ones. They aren't going to work as well. I hope I made my point. I didn't go on too much about it. I probably did go on too much about it, did I? Shh, don't say anything else. Sorry. The other thing that I always take skiing is a scarf. I just am a person that likes to have my neck really, really warm. I have my long johns on, then I have my turtleneck, and then I wrap my scarf around, and then my ski jacket on top of that, and that's what I would wear. Believe it or not, I'm not like a high fashion ski bunny. <laughs> these are my ski trousers. Oh my gosh, I bought these about 12, no, 15 years ago. So if you are buying ski clothes, certainly for the bottoms, buy something of that color or black. My ski jacket. It's Gore-Tex. For women's ski jackets, they tend to be very high at the back. I, I like a longer ski jacket. I like to not think that I'm going to have snow go up my back when and if I fall. They are actually very hard to find. I saw it when I was in France in one of the shops and then I came back home. I took a photo of it, came back home and found it cheaper online. And I usually buy things a little bit more neutral, but I just changed my mind. Changed your mind it's got lots of pockets and it's also got inner pockets as well and you can put your phone in there or whatever that again as I say is quite unusual look for lots and lots of pockets because you're going to bring snacks hey edible underwear you're going to bring money you're going to bring your credit card you're going to bring all kinds of stuff with you please remember to bring a tube of this. It, you get plagued with dry skin on your legs and your arms and your back and all the rest of it just because of the climate change. Seasons change, still the same range. What will it take? Tell me why the way. My husband does have a snowboard bag that's enormous. And he puts these bag of clothes inside. I went out with my boots. That is a, another place that you can stick some stuff in. I put my travel mug inside one of my boots. I put our little brandy thing inside the other boot. If you're going out with shampoo or something like that, that might be a place to put it. But please make sure you wrap it in a plastic bag because you sure don't want to have shampoo in your ski boot because it burst on the plane. This is my carry-on bag. My 17-inch laptop. This knapsack is great. I love it. These are my two techie things. All the GoPro stuff. And um, there's the dead cat. My headphones. My knitting bag. You know I made four hats when I was out. 
there. A little toiletry bag, your documents. The other thing you want to bring is drugs. <laughs> Bring paracetamol or Tylenol for headaches, ibuprofen for the muscle pain, and bring some Cocodamol. Those are my tips for packing then for a ski trip. Obviously, being the ski nut family that we are, uh, we've had lots of great, great memories skiing, and I really do hope it's something that everyone can have the opportunity to do. As I said, if any friends of mine that are out there watching this, if they want to give it a go, I completely offer all of my equipment, all my clothes, even my long underwear to you. I'm definitely not wearing my underwear. Lots of great memories skiing. We keep our maps of the pistes and the hills and just look going, oh, remember that? It was so nice. But my most treasured ski possession has to be these little gloves. And these were worn by both of my little girls. They used to pretend they were lobster claws. So every time I see the lobster claws, I think, ah. Oh. So I hope that if my children have children, I'll pass these on to the lobster claw next generation. So happy skiing, happy adventures. Bye. How many mountains to get some confidence? Years pass. I'm still the same. What will it take? Why the way?